Okay, hi folks. I hope everyone is doing well. Thank you so much for joining us yet again. We're super excited to be continuing our journey to discovering your success with Anne Marie Sabbath. And today we're digging in to some awesome keys and habits in her book. And if you have not checked out her book yet, I greatly advise you to do so. All the links will be below in the description of this video, as well as in our newsletter and in an upcoming article on our website. So as you know, we started this YouTube series. We are now into episode four and we're super excited about it. So let's dig in. Anne Marie has some amazing tidbits. They're nuggets of knowledge. That's what they are, really. They're nuggets of knowledge from her book. But remember, in order to really grasp the concept, you need to read the book. Because when you read the book, it all cohesively comes together. So let's bring Anne Marie in. Hi, Anne Marie. How are you today? Great, Carol Ann. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. So, um, as we're digging into your book, one of the keys that you talk about, and in depth, okay, is the importance of being a lifelong learner. Can you go into some of the important tips? Because a lot of people might say, well, what does that have to do with being success? Like, how is that going to help me create my success in life? Could you explain to our listeners why you have four ways to master becoming a, a, a lifelong learner? Can you dig into those? Definitely. As you know, in my book, uh, What Self Made Billionaires Do That Most People Don't, I interviewed 30 people who came from nothing. And what was fascinating was what people did. Individuals who have created their own success are very thirsty for knowledge. And for that reason, they typically read books on inspiration, self-help, motivation, biographies, history. They do that because they want to know what people have done before them, no matter how successful they are, no matter where they are on their self-made journey. Mm -hmm. And so this was important. In fact, Thomas Corley, who is one of the 30 people who I interviewed for the book, has a few books out. And one of his books that we quoted uh, is in his 2016 book called Change Your Habits, Change Your Life. And one of the interesting things that Thomas Corley found was that 87% of individuals, specifically the 177 self-made millionaires, actually devote 30 minutes or more a day to read. Mm -hmm. So instead of watching TV, vegging, what they do is they have such a thirst for knowledge that they use those 30 minutes or longer for a minimum of 30 minutes to take in information about people, what they've done, how they've done it, because successful people want to be able to make sure they're on the right track. That's a big thing. Yeah, um, it, it makes a lot of sense. So, so instead of like watching TV at the end of the day for that hour, devote some time to doing research about other people's success, right? Definitely. I tell you, when I was a teenager, and that was a few years ago, I remember reading Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. When you go into a coffee shop, I will bet you, if there are 100 people there reading, surfing the internet, one of them is actually reading something, whether it's a quote or the book by Napoleon Hill. And so I say that because people who are on the road to bettering themselves financially, intellectually, emotionally, spiritually, want to know what it takes. And so this is really what this book is about. Let me mention one more thing, if I may. Mm -hmm. What uh, the Pew Internet Group poll found was that the average adult in the U.S., actually reads a mere five books a year. Now think about that. Whereas if you or I read 30 minutes a day about something fairly productive, that equates to 30 books a year. So what that is telling you is what goes in comes out. 
when you read about success, inspiration, desire, motivation, how to overcome what some people perceive as failure, what comes out is that drive to do it. And you've learned how to by those 30 minutes. Absolutely. And take copious notes too, because um, I remember like being in college and having, you know, an overwhelming amount of information being thrusted at you every day. Notes are a lifesaver. So taking good notes too is very important. And writing down things that mean, that have value and mean something to you too, right? Now you also go into um, these, the four breakdowns of it, or three, I'm sorry. You're reading, doing, and listening. Can you just quickly go through those for us? Now you went through reading, but you have doing and listening. Can you kind of interject how that will help us with our success goals? Definitely. Now, while I respect what you said, Carol Ann, about writing copious notes, what people need to realize is that they do it based on what works for them. And so I say that because you want to learn something new every day based on how you take it in. To your point, and from a neurolinguistic standpoint, approximately 75% of people in the world are visual. Visual people like you jot notes. They have to see it in order to digest it. Yes. Now, doing people, people or doers, kinesthetic feeling, sensory people, they are the doers. So example, what I do to be able to take in information is while I enjoy reading, I may be doing something while I am listening to an audio or I love new experiences in order to quench my thirst for knowledge. I schedule things to do that are new so that my neurons stay fired up. It can be seeing a movie with a director speaking. It can be learning something that I had no clue about. Whatever it is, so it's a doing. And then the last is people who are listeners want to hear, whether it's a YouTube mm -hmm. series, whether it's a podcast, it doesn't matter. However, the most important thing for our viewers is to be able to take in information based on what's most natural for you, because that will define and allow you to want to be on that road to success. So discover the type of learner that you are, and then from there, follow whatever advice you recommend. Like if you're an auditory learner, you know, make sure you listen 30 minutes a day, right? If, you, if you're if you kinesthetic and you need to touch things, you know, so kind of like follow what type of learner that you are, right, Anne-Marie? Yes, follow your gut. That's follow important. Gut. Do what's natural for you in the way of, taking in information. And speaking of that, I'd like to share the three ways to learn something new every day. Uh, the key is a lot of people say, I don't have time. Well, guess what? You have time for what you want. And again, that's one of the secrets for creating your own success. So number one, you can look on Eventbrite. Look at the different activities that are in your area within a block, two or three away, or download or purchase a copy of a book. That's another great way. Have it somewhere so that you're ready to trip in front of it. Read for 15 minutes before you go to bed. Read when you're on the subway. Read when you're at a doctor's. Read anytime you get someplace early, a secret for success, go ahead and read that. And then the last is two ears, one mouth. Make sure you listen more than you talk. That's excellent. And I'm, I'm a rereader. Like I like to read, give it a quick run and then I dig in and I start like putting post-it notes and jotting things down, you know, but you, again, you do what works for you, right? Definitely. That's the key. There's no right or wrong way. The way to learn is what is most natural for you. Definitely. Awesome. Now in your next key, you talk about some topics that people might say, well, how is, you know, this going to help me become successful? And the title of your habit, Habit 7, is They Stay Organized. And I think this is a big one. And you deeply dive into minimalism and you go into the five advantages of being a minimalist. Now, a lot of people that I know, most people I know are not 
minimalistic. And I'd have to say a lot of them are not really as successful as they wish they could be. So could you correlate for us? Why is it so important to incorporate the concept of minimalism in our lives? Definitely. In fact, this was a real surprise for me. Less is more. So when, again, I interviewed these 30 people who came from nothing. I was surprised by what they said, and I was really surprised by the environments that I visited because these people had what they needed in their environment. I don't mean they were monks. However, they did not have a lot of tchotchkes around. And the reason for that is when you are organized, you also are a minimalist. A minimalist is someone who keeps what he or she really needs in his or her midst. By doing that, you feel more orderly because you have fewer things that will distract you. At the same time, you're more time efficient because you don't have to touch something to be able to get to something else. It's extremely important. And it also, number three, helps you be much more productive. It's a power of focusing. This is minimalism. So what this tells you is when you are a clutter bug, when you are with people who have a lot of clutter in their lives, there's a better chance than not that they can integrate being a minimalist into their lives. So, you know, Oprah said this many times, if you buy something, get rid of something. This is important. And anything you have not used for a year, two years, give away, sell, throw away. Somebody else can use it. It's so important. And so part of being a success is having little in your life. Again, I don't mean living like a hermit. I mean, ask yourself, what are the necessities that you need? If you haven't used it, pitch it. There's a lot of people that struggle with that. And it seems to be, you know, very much like a topic the past year with Maria Kondo coming out with her organizing and getting rid of, you know, that whole thing. And so I can I can totally appreciate that. So minimalism is going to help us like think clearer, be more organized, not feel as like oppressed by all these items. Right, Anne Marie? Yes. And I heard you say something recently, Caroline. I heard you say that you give your books away and you have them downloaded. Tell us about that regarding minimalism. Yeah, that was a big one for me because I had like a ridiculous amount of books where it was becoming weighted. We, you know, my husband and I felt like there was like we'd walk into the living room and it was waiting on us because it was just bookshelves of books. And I said, you know what? I'm going to pick the books I love, get the PDFs and make them all electronic. And I can't tell you, I, I, I made a lot of people happy by giving the books away and it made us happy by giving the books away. So it was great. And you also have more square footage. Yes. It was wonderful to do as much as I love my books. Now I only keep books I cherish and everything else is electronic. So that was a big one. You were right on the head with that one. Now you talk about um, three steps in becoming a minimalist and you say create a dress uniform. Um, can you go into those three points? Like, how do you do this? Definitely. In fact, I was speaking with Emilio Espiritu, who's a podcaster last week. And after reading my book, What Self Made Millionaires Do That Most People Don't, he said that he got rid of all of his clothes, except for two Navy suits. He invested in three or four other Navy suits. He likes wearing button down shirts and he wears open collar shirts. He said, that's all I wear. Every day I wear a Navy suit with a different shirt. He said, that's how I have learned to become a minimalist. You know, Kevin O'Leary, Shark Tank, Mr. Wonderful does yeah. the same thing. He owns five black suits, white uh, shirts, and he wears a different tie each day of the week. And so this is essential. And face it, even though we don't believe it, guess what? The slacks, the trousers, the skirt, the jewelry that you and I are wearing right now is probably what we wear most of the time. So the key is 
take the basic items. In fact, I have to tell you, when writing this book, I tested it. I took 100 items in my life and I put everything else away. So I covered my closet with what I wasn't going to be using with a sheet. And for one month, I only used what I knew I had to have. And I have to tell you, I couldn't even get through that. So I love purses. I made sure I had four purses because I love to change. I had three pairs of back black slacks, probably eight tops, three jackets, whatever the case, one set of dishes, meaning for a place setting of four in case we had company, went on and on and on. 20 pieces of jewelry because I love jewelry and I wanted to rotate. I could not even get to 100. The question is, what is it that you have in your life that you really don't use? That is how you become a minimalist, to be able to ask yourself that. I love it. That's great. Um, okay. And you also talk about the four strategies for planning ahead. Um, can we close on focusing on some of those? Because there's a lot of folks that don't like to plan ahead. And it really messes up their mojo when they think of, like, the pressure of having to do that. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Definitely. Planning ahead actually minimizes your stress. That's what's so amazing. So number one, what you do is in order to plan ahead, schedule time approximately 20% a day to react and have the other 80% acting. And by doing that, when it's time to plan ahead and somebody interrupts you and they really need you, that is part of your 20%. So by doing that, you're still feeling like you're focused and you're moving ahead. Mm -hmm. Number two, recognize that you're creating your tomorrow by planning today. I love that one. Thank you. And that goes for laying your clothes out the night before. If you pack a lunch, pack the night before. If you are driving, get gas the day before you need it versus on your way to work. If you know that you're going to be eating home the majority of the week, plan your menu so you at least have the food in the freezer versus running every day. The key is planning ahead allows you to stay on task and it actually builds more quiet time into your schedule. I really like that a lot too because I know a lot of folks that aren't planners. They just get up and, you know, live off the seat of their pants every day and they're always in like chaos. They seem to have a lot of chaos in their life. So with basic planning, you can avoid all this chaos and then focus on the things that are going to bring you success, right? That's the name of the game. People who plan ahead create their own success. And this is exactly what I found the self-made millionaires doing. They are not, we talked about this before, they're not on time. They're early. I'm going to talk about a day early or an hour early. They're at least 10 minutes early when they get to a function. Or they are ready for that telephone call versus making an excuse about why they could not get on the call at a certain time. So when you plan ahead, you're spending more time acting rather than chasing your tail. And one last thing, if I may <laughs> sure. share it. Successful people, and we'll talk about this another time, delegate. Anything you've done successfully three times should be delegated, whether it's creating a format letter and then plugging in what you need, that's a form of delegation whether it's giving it to someone on your team or if you're talking about a family member, give those responsibilities, those tasks to children. This is the way that you groom them for success. And I think folks need to understand that, you know, the research you put into all of these concepts and keys, um, you know, took you a, a very long time and that and these are all qualities and attributes of things that made folks successful, right? The answer is yes, however, but what's more interesting is I've heard from so many readers since this book came out May 21st, 2018. And what people told me who wrote, who have read what self-made millionaires do that most people don't, is they have said, my goodness, I have 40 or 45 of the 52 secrets. I did not realize how close I was to achieving this status. Because remember, it's not necessarily about the money. Right. It's about the habits that you have integrated into your daily personal and professional and life. And that's so true because they'll make you more productive. 
They'll make you happier. You'll feel at peace. And they're not difficult things to really conceptualize, right? Staying organized, planning your day, the following day, the night before, getting rid of clutter. Are you kidding me? Reading something that will allow you to learn. How simple are these secrets for success? Everybody and anybody can do them. I love it. Now, next week, and as you know, folks, every Monday before noon, we upload new and next week we'll be uploading series five and we're going to be focusing on a lot of really important keys and habits here like efficiency and delegation that Anne marie just mentioned we have a lot of really good goodies coming out of here so folks definitely be sure you subscribe and share if you can share these videos we greatly appreciate that as well also there's a little notification bell if you click that that will send you a reminder to let you know that there's been a recent upload from me and Anne Marie so definitely click that notification button too and again you can always email Anne Marie any of your questions I'll run her email address and website information at the bottom as we're speaking and of course you can reach out to me as well and I'll have that information too anything else in closing Anne Marie that you'd like to share or thank you you did a great job my last comment would be to uh, have individuals subscribe so that they in turn can win a copy of what yes. self-made millionaires do that most people don't and you may share how we do give them away yes uh, if you leave a comment below we're going to put your name in a weekly pool and a random generator will pick your name and then Anne Marie will send you the format that you desire so if you want audio if you want PDF a hardcover she will be willing to part with that as well thank you Thank you, Anne-Marie, and we will see you all next week. Have a wonderful and blessed week, all of you, and thanks so much again for watching.